so hello guys so we are given a question of mixed convection in a lead driven cavity so we need to solve this so here we are given a fluid element of dimension 10 by 10 centimeter so we will open the workbench then we will go to fluid flow fluent then we will click and drag it now we will go to geometry now we will right click on it then we will click on new design modeler geometry So the design model are starting. <coughs> so we are ready. So now we'll before uh, drawing the, ge the geometry, we'll first set the dimension as centimeter because it is given in centimeter for our convenience. So we'll go to units, then we'll click on centimeter. Now we'll go to x y plane. Then now we'll draw the square. So we'll go to rectangle and we'll draw the rectangle then we'll go to dimension then we'll go to general then we'll give the dimension this is the, this is the horizontal this is the vertical so we'll give it as 10 centimeter both so it's now set to 10 by 10 centimeter so now we'll go to concept then we'll click on surface from sketches then we'll expand the xy plane then we'll select the sketch then we'll click on apply now we'll click on generate so you can see the element is generated now we'll go to this part body we will select the surface body then we'll uh, select the material whether it is full or fluid or solid we will select it as fluid since it is given in the position it is air that means fluid so we'll set it as fluid then i think it's fine then we'll click on generate yeah it's done now we'll cancel the design model <coughs> now we'll go to mesh right click on it then we'll click on edit so the mesh is starting So here we will do the mesh. So wait some time till it's loaded completely. So yeah, so this is the fluid element and we are ready to begin. So now we'll go to mesh, then right click on it, then we'll go to insert, then we'll click on face meshing. Then we'll click the face meshing and select the fluid element. Then in the geometry, we'll click apply. So the face meshing is done. So now we'll again click on mesh, right click on it, then we'll click on insert, then we'll go to sizing. We'll go to sizing, then we'll select the edge using control. We'll place, we'll uh, press and hold the control button, then we'll select all the edges. Okay, now we'll click on apply. So in the type of element size, we'll I think we will we need to change it into number of divisions then the number of divisions will give it as 100 so now it's 100 by 100 in the behavior we will convert from soft to hard then we will click on uh, generate so it's done the meshing part so again we will go to edge then we now will click uh, now we will create name selection for each edge so this is the top wall then this side is the cold wall and then this one is the bottom wall and this one is the hot wall so now we'll click on generate so now you can see the name selection all are generated top wall cold wall bottom wall and hot wall 
so it's done so now you can cancel it or uh, before you cancel it we can do one thing we can update here only once we click on generate then we can update now it's showing a message the mesh translation for the fluent was successful so it is already update, updated now we can close it so the mesh is done and updated now we'll double click on setup and we'll select double precision solver process 6 gpu 1 then click on start so the fluent is now opening okay so here it's loaded okay so now you can see there, there is given a gravity in the negative y direction so we will first set the gravity in the y as minus 9.8 meter per second square okay now we'll go to model we'll turn on the energy equation now we'll go to fiscus property of fluid and set it as laminar okay now we'll go to materials in the fluid section double click on the air <coughs> so in the question it is given we need to set it as bonisk so we'll set it as bonisk and the density will be is given this one we'll copy it and we'll paste here and the thermal expansion coefficient is also given this beta so we'll copy it and we'll paste here then click on change create then click on close so it's done uh, now we'll go to boundary condition and we'll set the boundary condition for each wall first select the bottom wall click on edit so the boundary condition for bottom wall is it is insulated and no slip so it's no slip already and insulated so heat flux is zero okay click on apply then close now we'll go to cold wall click on edit So in the cold wall, it is given 290 Kelvin and no slip. So it's already no slip and in thermal part, we will set the temperature as 290 Kelvin. Click on apply, then close. Now in the hot wall, in the hot wall, uh, it is given no slip and 305 Kelvin. So it's no slip and the temperature is 305 kelvin we'll click on apply then we'll close now we'll go to top wall click on edit so in the top wall uh, it said that it is insulated and velocity of top wall is 0 0.01 meter per second so since it has a velocity we will select the moving wall and click on absolute and set the velocity as 0 0.01 meter per second and it's saying that it is insulated so we'll go to thermal and heat flux is zero so click on apply then close so boundary condition is done so now we'll go to initialization part so hybrid initialization so click on initialize so it's saying the hybrid initialization is done so now we'll go to run calculation then uh, so before running the calculation we need to do one thing we need to go to methods we need to do it as simplex then pressure is presto it will be third order msql okay uh, i forgot to set this so we'll again 
go to initialization we initialize it again so it's done now we will go to run calculation and set the number of iteration as 1000 So this is the graph that is showing. So calculation is complete. So now we will close it. So now we will go to results section and click on edit. So now let's see the question. Now it's we did this two step we also plot the graph just now now it is asking to uh, draw the chart of horizontal and vertical center line velocity so before that we need to create a horizontal and vertical center line so for that we will go to insert and then click on location then we will click on line first we will create a horizontal center line we will set the sample as 100 and we'll set the coordinate of horizontal center line so this is one centimeter square so this is the origin so from here we need to set the dimension uh, coordinates of horizontal center line from this point to this point so let's set the coordinates So this is the coordinate we set it. Now we will click on apply. So this is the horizontal center line. Again, we will create a vertical center line. So again, we'll set the sample as 100 and let's set the coordinate of vertical center line from this point to this point. And this is the origin. Keep it in mind. click on apply so it is created so now we can create the chart of article and horizontal center line we will go to insert then click on chart so we will first create horizontal center line horizontal center line velocity okay we'll click on okay now we will go to data series and change the series name to horizontal center line velocity then we'll click on location and select the horizontal center line then we'll go to y axis then change the variable from pressure to velocity u because it is in horizontal direction that's why it's u then click on apply so this is the graph or the chart of horizontal center line velocity similarly we will create the chart for vertical center line velocity go to data series and change the series name to vertical center line velocity select the location as vertical center line now go to y axis and change the variable from pressure to velocity v because it is in vertical direction then click on apply so this is the chart for vertical central in velocity so well, number one is done so now we have to create velocity contour and temperature contour so to create a contour go to insert and click on contour so first we'll create temperature contour click on ok so change the variable to temperature and location uh, symmetry 1 
let's open a 3d viewer so this is symmetry we need the symmetrical uh, contour on both the sides so that's why symmetry then temperature the number of controls is 100 we need to set it so now click on apply you can see this is created so this is the temperature contour similarly we create the uh, velocity contour so first untick the temperature contour because it will overlap with the velocity contour diagram so change the variable to velocity location is symmetry 1 number of contours 100 and click on apply so this is the velocity contour so number 2 and 3 is done so now we need to show the temperature variation at the top wall that is the chart of temperature variation at the top wall so before that we need to uh, create a line at the top wall so first go to insert then click on location then click on line then create a top wall line set the number of samples 100 now we need to create the coordinates of the top wall line from this point to this point this is the origin let's set the coordinates okay so this yellow color top wall line is created now we can uh, create the chart so temperature variation at top wall so change the data series name as temperature variation at top well you we select the location as the top wall line that we have created just now and then we'll go to y-axis and change the variable to temperature then click apply so this is the temperature variation chart at the top wall line so this is done so now it's in the fifth step it is asking to show, show the changes uh, when the temperature criteria termination criterion is changed to 10 to the minus 6 that is in the monitor residual part we have to change it into 10 to the minus 6 and show the changes so uh, for that we need to cut it then we will go to setup So it's loading. So yeah, it's loaded. So we have to change it into ten to the power minus six, the residual part of the monitor. So let's go to monitor and click on double click on the residual part and we have to change it in 10 to the power minus 6. So just copy this and set everything as 10 to the power minus 6. Click on OK. Then we'll go to initialization again. We'll initialize the hybrid initialization. <clears throat> so it's taking some time it's saying preparing mass for display just wait for some time
so now it's showing that hybrid initialization is done now we'll go to run calculation part we'll now click on calculate So it's now creating the graph. So it's saying the calculation is complete. Now click on OK. Now cut it. So now we'll uh, go to results and first update it. Now we'll right click on it and click on edit and we'll see how the graph and the contours changes so let's see first uh, let's see the temperature variation at top wall so this is the new chart this is the vertical center line velocity graph and this is the horizontal center line velocity graph and let's go to 3d viewer and this is the new velocity contour just wait yeah so this is the new velocity contour and this is the new temperature contour after the changes that we have made in the residual part by changing it into 10 to the power minus 6 <coughs> so this is done so in the last step it is saying to show the changes in temperature plot when the mass size is increased from 100 by 100 to 300 to 300 so now we just need to change the mass size and see the changes for that we need to go and click on this arrow and click on duplicate okay now we'll go to mass and right click on it and click on edit so let's go to mass part and select the edge sizing and change the number of divisions to 300 is 300 click on generate so it's generated you can see it's more fine now so it's done now we'll click on update so it's updated now we can close it now we'll again go to setup and double click on it and we'll start it now the fluent is opened again as new
okay so now we'll keep everything as it is now we'll go to initialization and hybrid initialization so hybrid initialization is done so now we'll go to run calculation and let's calculate so this is the new plot after we change the mesh size to 300 by 300 now see how this green and red line converts before it was just split a little bit now it's converts and more aligned and perfectly aligned you can see because we have changed the mesh size to 300 and it will give more accurate result because of the maximum number of finite elements in the fluid element that we have made See how the, how it's converging. So mass size actually matters a lot. If we increase the mass size, it will give more accurate result. So calculation is done now we'll click on ok and just close it so now we'll go to result sections again and click on update Now let's see <clears throat> how it changes. Okay, let's see the chart. So this is the temperature variation at the top wall. See, after we change the mass size to 300 by 300, this is the particle center line velocity chart. This, uh, this is the horizontal center line velocity chart. Now come to 3D view. This is the velocity contour, and this is the temperature contour. 
so this is all about what we did in this question so thank you